I'm a little bit scared because what if I don't enjoy the books like I did the first time around? Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and I love to talk about books and today I'm here to talk to you about my 2021 TBR. Now, <laughs> I'm a spreadsheeter, a planner and a little bit crazy. So um, my TBR for 2021 has um, space for 98 books and currently I only have about four or five blank spaces <laughs> in there. So don't worry, I'm not gonna run you through all 98 books. But I will kick this video off by saying that this is an open call for anyone who wants to do a buddy read with me in 2021. I have never done a buddy read before and I would absolutely love to. So if any of the books that I mention in this video um, are something that you are planning on reading and you would like a buddy to do it with, then hit me up. Either drop me a comment below or um, go to my Instagram or my Twitter and send me a DM or a tweet or whatever. Just get in contact with me and we will try and thrash out the details. So instead of discussing the 98 books, I thought I would do this as a 21 books I want to read in 2021. And the first ones that I want to talk about are for a little project that I am classing as Project Everlasting Love. This is um, <laughs> rereading books that I have really loved in the past but in a lot of the cases, I haven't read those books again since. In fact, I think in all of the cases, I haven't read those books again since. And um, it's been a long time since I first read them. So I thought it would be good to see if I still love them, if my love is everlasting, or if maybe it's time to break up with them. So I've got six books on that list. And the first one is... The Snow Child by, I can never pronounce her name, is it Eowyn Ivy? Owen Ivy? Anyway, this book is beautiful. I'm not going to get into the details of books here because 21 books in one video is a lot for anyone. It's particularly a lot for the person having to do the talking. Um, but this is the story of Jack and Mabel in Alaska in the 1920s. Um, they've moved there to have a fresh start to do homesteading. Um, but the wilderness is a stark place and Mabel is haunted by the baby she lost many years before. So there is a kind of folk tale -y feel to this one. They make a little girl out of snow and the next day that snow girl has gone. But then this other um, girl who seems to live wild and free in the wilderness comes into their lives. And I remember I, I read it on audiobook the first time around and I just thought it was stunningly beautiful and I'm really looking forward to a reread of this. Although having said that, I'm gonna say that for all of them because I'm really looking forward to all the rereads here. But so this is my first one. And then next, if you saw my Joy of Christmas tag video, then you'll have heard me talking about this one at a bit of length. So again, I'm not going to labor the point, but it is The History of Love by Nicole Krauss. Um, I've held this one in such high regard since I read it um, back in 2017. I absolutely love it. It's part coming of age story of a 14 year old American girl and part mystery historical fiction on the part of an 80 year old um, man who is a Polish immigrant to America. He's a Holocaust survivor. He wrote a book about a woman that he loved um, and although they don't know each other the girl is named after the woman in this book and that's what links them. It's glorious. My next pick is um, links to another book on my TBR because I'm going to be reading Wintering, a novel of Sylvia Plath by I can't remember the author, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but because I'm reading that, I thought it'd probably be a good idea to revisit The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Um, so I'm gonna read this one first and then get on to wintering later in the year. I read this years ago. I think Sylvia Plath is a really interesting literary figure. Um, and even though I don't read poetry, um, I have read her, is it short stories, Johnny Panic and the Bible of Dreams? I've probably butchered that title. I also read that around the same time as I read The Bell Jar, um, 
when I was in kind of like my early 20s I think and this is basically it's a novel but I think it draws very heavily from Plath's own experiences it's about a woman called Esther who is really successful um, but this kind of charts her descent towards a breakdown um, and obviously if you know anything about Sylvia Plath you know that she really struggled with her mental health and she did die by suicide um, so I think there's a lot of parallels between this and her actual story Next is a slightly controversial book. If you've been watching my videos for a little while, you will know that I read um, The Geisha of Gion uh, by, in fact, I think it's over here because I can't remember the author's surname. Oh my God, I've just totally bent the cover. Mm, but, um, it was already massacred with a sticker. Uh, by Mineko Iwasaki. Mm. And this is the woman who claims that Memoirs of a Geisha was based on her life, but was deeply, deeply unhappy with the way that Arthur Golden represented Geisha. So she wrote her memoirs to try and set the story straight. I had mixed feelings about this book. I thought it was really interesting hearing about the Geisha way of life, uh, but I just really didn't like her at all. Um, but reading that made me want to revisit Memoirs of a Geisha because I read this again, I think in my early 20s, I loved it really really loved it I was completely unaware of the controversy that surrounded it I was also completely naive as to issues such as representation um, or you know the concept of a white American man writing the story of a um, Japanese geisha woman so I'm going to revisit this see if I can pick out those flaws second time around but also to see whether, even despite that, I still like it. Um, so this is, well, it even mentions on the on the blurb the thing that really um, lit the powder keg in terms of the story and how it represented Geisha because it says, we enter a world where appearances are paramount, where a girl's virginity is auctioned to the highest bidder. This is very contested. Geisha are not um, sex workers and the inclusion of that in this book was really very offensive so that's another one of my rereads. We also have The Cutting Room by Louise Welsh. I'm being super lazy, it's on my bookcase upstairs, I cannot be bothered to go and get it um, but I read this, it was just I think just as I was coming back into reading as an adult. So Louise Welsh, she's actually English, I think, but I always class her as a Scottish author because I think she's lived here for such a long time. And this book is actually set in Glasgow. And off the top of my head, um, it is a, a man that does like house clearances for auction houses. And he is clearing the house of a man who has recently passed away and he finds some old fashioned like snuff photos. I'm trying to do this delicately. Um, snuff is a form of pornography where I think women pretend to be dead or um, pretend to get killed. So he finds these photos but there's something about the photo that really makes it, it look as if she's genuinely dead and so this goes into a kind of murder mystery I think it's about like who the girl was, who killed her, that sort of thing. It was really exciting for me when I read it because I think it was the first time I'd read a story from the perspective of a gay man. Which again, coming back to that whole thing about representation, it's written by a gay woman. So there is an issue there around that. Sorry, that is my doorbell. Sorry, that took a little bit longer than I thought. It's now hours later, um, and, but I am back to finish talking about the 21 books I must read in 2021. So, The Cutting Room. I think I kind of covered it. Um, dark mystery, set in Glasgow, um, and I really want to revisit that one because I've read um, quite a few of Louise Welsh's books now, but that, I think, is... Um, her best um, of the ones I've read anyway. Uh, next up on my uh, rereads list I have The Glass House by Sophie Cook. Now I read this probably about 15 years ago and again it's always just kind of stuck with me. So this is about a young girl called Vanessa who lives in, I think it's, is it an island? 
it just says the southern highlands of Scotland um, but she has been expelled from her boarding school so she has had to come home her other two sisters are still at boarding school her dad works away quite a lot of the time so really this is an ideal opportunity for her and her mum to spend time together get to know each other a bit better um, but unfortunately it doesn't work out that way because she instead finds herself watching her mother self-destruct and from what I can remember this is basically about the impact of that on Vanessa and you know what's going on in the family um, so it's always stayed in my memory as being a really compellingly written novel um, and obviously it's set in Scotland we all know that I have a it's less of a soft spot um, and more of like a soft all over body covering <laughs> for books set in Scotland so there's my next one and my final um, reread for 21 is um, Cleaned Out oh this is really shiny okay this is not going to be fun there we go hold it at an angle um, Cleaned Out by Annie Erno um, she is a French author um, fairly prolific I think but I even though I've had like books by her on my Amazon kind of to buy list ever since I read this back in I don't know like 2003 four maybe um, I've never actually managed to buy any more of her books um, which is ridiculous but this book I just thought was fantastic so it's about a girl or well young woman recovering from the um, the after effects of having a back alley abortion. As she's, you know, trying to recover from this, she spends a lot of time looking at her upbringing, her childhood, kind of what has brought her to the place where she needed to take such drastic action. And it really impacted on me, particularly it's quite a short book. It was written about 40 years ago. Um, and I remember thinking as I was reading it that it just, it still felt so, fresh and modern and I was just so impressed by it um, because even now you don't get a lot of literature um, about abortion or about you know the need for choice the need for safe access um, and things and I mean this isn't a political statement in in that way but it's just so refreshing to hear it from the the voice of a character who's actually going through it so yeah I really really want to get to that one again um, so moving on from rereads, the next group of books that are on my TBR for 2021 are kind of, I would class them as booktube darlings and they are books that possibly I wouldn't have known about if it hadn't been for booktube but they're ones that are talked about all the time and either because they sound fantastic or because I am very susceptible <laughs> to peer pressure and marketing, um, I really, really want to get to them in 2021. So the first one is, is Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. Um, basically, it's from a British perspective, um, which makes a change from a lot of the American narrative that I've read so far. And it says it explores everything from eradicated black history to the inextricable link between class and race. It's the essential handbook for anyone who wants to understand race relations in Britain today. And I am one of those people. So looking forward to that one. And then it's to my Audible account for the next one. I have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is a book about, um, I, are they mixed race? I think they're mixed race twins um, who can pass as white. One sister decides to do just that and live her life as a white woman um, and it's about the path that takes her life, the path her sister takes by you know embracing her blackness and living um, as a black woman and the I think the effects on their relationships and on their lives as they unfold. I don't really need to go into any more of it than that because I'm pretty sure everyone knows about it. I'm probably the last person on earth to get round to it, so that's on there. And speaking of being one of the last people on earth to get to a book, I'm sticking with Audible for the next one um, and I'm going to be reading My Dark Vanessa. This is the story of, I'm assuming her name is Vanessa, um, so it's a woman 
looking back at a relationship that she had with a teacher that she has always seen in a particular light. Um, so she's always classed it, you know, as a relationship. Um, but I think this teacher has been accused of sexual abuse or inappropriate behaviour with students. And as these other narratives are coming out where people are labelling it as abuse and talking about the detrimental effect it's had on them, she's really um, thrown into a place where she has to question or justify or defend how she has viewed her experiences. And I just think that sounds so, so intelligent and really needed discussion for um, where we are, you know, kind of... Uh, are we post Me Too? Are we still in Me Too? We're still in a fucked up society. So whichever way you want to tag it, it's something that really needs to be discussed. And I know um, quite a few of you guys have read this. I've heard really good things about it and I'm really looking forward to getting to that one. I've got to stop saying that. I'm looking forward to getting to all of these books. <laughs> and then next up we have a absolute beast of a book. A Little Life by Hanyo Yanagihara. Um, mm -hmm. So this is like over 700 pages and it's an emotional ride. Um, I know that there was, I haven't seen one for a while actually, but I know people went through um, a phase where there was a lot of kind of vlogs of people reading this. Let me know if you would like me to do one of those because apparently this is a traumatic reading experience. Um, it's, it is not a happy book. And handily it has the most infuriating blurb on the back where it's all just quotes about what other people think of the book. I don't care. I want to know what is in this many pages before I buy it. Why do you think I care what the Independent on Sunday thinks? It just frustrates me when publishers do that. But the basic gist of this book is it is about a man who has quite a um, traumatised background um, and basically how he deals or doesn't deal with that, I think. You know, I've, I've been wanting to read this for a while. I picked it up in my favourite place to buy new books, which is FOP. Um, bargain. I know, I know. I will take the sticker off. And normally, uh, I only read a few big books a year. And um, this is bigger than I would even usually consider, but I think it's time to rise to the challenge. Um, so what else have I got on my list? I've got Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, Time Travel, Slavery in America, Race Relations, um, everyone knows this book, I don't need to labour the point. I also have um, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Again, I don't think I need to say too much about this because everyone and their granddad has read this book, but it's basically uh, the stories of, I think, 12 women um, interwoven together. It uh, won the Booker Prize in 2019 and it's meant to be fabulous. So there's that. Also, sticking with the yellow books, I have The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley, which is about a group of, um, I think they're postgrads. They go to a lodge in the Highlands for New Year. They get snowed in. Someone dies. Someone else committed the crime. And it's, it's basically just finding out who done it. Um, but it's apparently very, very good. So that's exciting. And I don't have a copy of this yet. Um, I think I talked about this in my uh, Joy of Christmas tag video, but I will be getting it when it comes out paperback. Shoggy Bane is on my list for 2021. Um, if you have been watching uh, Shoggy Gate between Ange from the channel Ange with an E and Simon from the channel Booktube with Simon, you... <laughs> You will have been thoroughly entertained by the storm of absolute shade that this has created between them. Um, but I am pretty much on team Ange with this. I'm excited to get to Shuggy Bane. And I think her love for it as well has just made me even more excited. Sorry, Simon. Um, and then again, back to Audible. This is funny. I think I've only listened to like one 
audiobook in 2020 and now I have at least three on my list for 2021. Let's hope that commuting comes back into my life um, to get those done. Um, but I'm also going to read The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde, which is about three women at different points in time who are um, all kind of linked to this area which is overshadowed by the Bass Rock. One's a witch in like the 1700s, one's a new bride, um, I think after the first, was it the Second World War, and one is a woman in um, modern times, but they are all linked in some way and that is really intriguing to me. I love interwoven stories. And so I think that takes us up to 16 books. So to finish off, just five random others that I'm quite excited about reading. The first one is one of the oldest books on my TBR. This was a freebie that I picked up in the staff room when I worked in Waterstones back in 2005 because it was damaged um, and I couldn't sell it. So um, as you can see, me and my stickers, this one is now completely <laughs> stuck to the book um, to say why it was not to go out on the shelves. But this is Chernobyl Strawberries, which is a memoir by a poet called, um, oh no, no, may, I might have a chance at pronouncing this, Vesna Goldsworthy. Now, I um, have always assumed from the title that this has um, something to do with the Chernobyl disaster. Actually, the blurb doesn't mention that. So I'll be intrigued to see uh, if, if that does play a part, or if she just happened to have lived in Chernobyl before all this happened, I don't know, but um, I just, I love memoirs, I don't need to know who the person is or anything. If it's a compellingly told um, memoir, then I'm in on it, and you know, this has to get read. It's been sat on my shelves for so long, so that is getting done this year. I've also been approved for the Net Galley of My Phantoms by Gwendolyn Riley. I'm quite excited about that. I read a couple of her books, um, again when I was working at Waterstones. One was called Cold Water and the other one was called Sick Notes and I really enjoyed them. I thought they totally captured the sense of kind of our generation, you know, the, the listlessness um, and the feeling of loneliness and things um, and I've kept them all these years. Again, haven't reread really those but this is her um, latest novel. It's about a woman called Bridget whose mother is dying. They've had quite a fraught relationship and in this period at the end of her mother's life um, she's having to do a bit of a reckoning about the the things that they have gone through so that just sounds like she's really retained that skill of writing about really relatable people and subjects so I'm excited to get to that one. Uh, next I have... where is it gone? There it is. Uh, Maggie and Me by Damien Barr. This is his uh, memoir of growing up as a gay boy in Thatcherite um, Scotland. Is it Glasgow? Yes, it's Glasgow. Damien Barr is just, he is wonderful to watch and listen to talk about books. I just think he is just a really great um, representation of book lovers and, and things. Um, so I'm really interested to actually get round to reading more about him. And um, also sticking with memoirs, particularly memoirs <laughs> set in Glasgow, this is Red Dust Road by Jackie Kay, who grew up as a black girl in Glasgow. Um, I think she was adopted and this looks at her childhood in Glasgow, but also I think after she becomes a mother, she decides to try and find her birth parents in Nigeria. I think it's Nigeria. Um, yeah, Nigeria. So I just think that's interesting. I've read a few books set in Nigeria, which I really, really loved. And also, clearly, I love books that are set in Glasgow. Um, and this is bringing them together. It's looking at race um, and it's a memoir. I mean, this has just got so much that I love in it. I'm hoping it delivers. And then my 21st book um, is Sarah Pascoe's Sex, Power, Money. I am a huge Sarah Pascoe fangirl. There is literally nothing that this woman could do that I wouldn't love. I, I swear to God, she is a uh, British comedian. She has got a couple of things on the telly at the moment that 
I think one, it looks like it's going to be a, a sort of documentary called Last Woman on Earth where she is learning how to do all these obscure jobs, I think, and that looks really good, but she also has a drama on as well, which I now can't remember the name of, put it on the screen. Um, I read her, I think her first book, um, Animal, like as soon as it came out, um, and I thought that was just, it had a lovely mix of confessional, really witty, really insightful um, writing in it and I'm guessing this one is going to be the same. So in this book she is exploring the complex connections between sex, power and money. It's a thoughtful and entertaining journey through anatomy and arousal, dating and sex work, animals and technology as she makes our most baffling human behaviours less mysterious. Um, so this is going to be really fun and if you haven't heard of Sarah Pascoe before please go and check her out because she is bloody wonderful. So that's it, 21 books that I will be getting to in 2021. If you plan on reading any of these give me a shout, maybe we can do a buddy read um, or if you've read any of them let me know your thoughts and um, what am I getting myself in for. Do you reread? As someone who doesn't do it very often I'm a little bit scared because what if I don't enjoy the books like I did the first time around. Offer me some words of comfort. <laughs> the rereading isn't scary, it's a joy, a lovely pleasurable thing to do. Hi, Future Sarah here. I sat down to film my January TBR and I thought actually it would probably make sense just to whack that in with my 21 and 21. So from my 21 and 21 there's three books that I am going to be reading from that. The first one is The Snow Child, Second one is why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. And the third one is my reread of um, A History of Love. I also have um, The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. She wrote an incredible short story collection called The Interpreter of Maladies that I read last year, I think, um, which I thought was phenomenal. Um, so I'm really excited to get to this. This is um, a novel but it kind of covers similar topics to a lot of the stories in that collection because it's looking at the immigrant experience of a couple from India who get married and they emigrate to America and this looks at the experience of their son as a first generation Indian American and what that experience is like for him so I think that's going to be great. I then have a huge backlog of net galleys um, which I'm hoping to clear in the first few months of 2021. Um, so in January I'm hoping to squeeze in as many of these particular titles as possible. So the first one is Alchemy and Rose by Sarah Main. I read her um, book The Woman in the Dunes. That was also a net galley. That was one of the first net galleys I ever read which I thought was really great. So I've actually got another of her books here. The House Between Tides, which I haven't read yet, um, but when I saw Annette Galley with one of her other titles, I just snapped it up, particularly when I saw that cover. Like, that is beautiful. Um, and people might be surprised to know that this is a romance. Um, not something that I would usually read, but I do trust Sarah Main's writing. Um, and this is set in New Zealand in the 1800s and looks at settlers Will and Rose, who are brought together by a, I think it's a shipwreck. Um, and they fall in love, but something happens um, that tears them apart and Rose returns to Scotland and Will basically chases her across the oceans to try and win her back. Um, on the surface, not probably a premise that would excite me, but I think this is going to be a good one. And uh, next up I have Little Gods by Meng Jin, and this is about um, Chinese-American Layla. Is it Leela? can't remember now, who has um, travelled back to China to scatter her mother's ashes. Her and her mother had a really fraught relationship and th this is her returning to her mother's home and just trying to unravel why they had such a bad relationship and I think it exposes family secrets in the process. Next up is What Have I Done by Laura Dockrell. This is a memoir of mental illness as Laura um, d discusses her mental health after the birth of her child, um, which kind of escalated into postpartum psychosis and really looks at that aspect of mental health, um, which I think is, I hate saying things like this, it's quite a brave topic to talk about, particularly, thankfully, uh, postpartum psychosis is relatively rare, um, but any form of postnatal depression 
although it is getting talked about more, particularly compared to when I was suffering with it when I had my um, oldest child, it's still a slightly taboo topic. So I'm really looking forward to reading about this because I think she is going to be really honest um, and it's just going to be a really interesting insight into the extremes of um, that sort of mental ill health. And then I have A Burning by Megan uh, Mega Majinda. Um, this is about the aftermath of a terrorist attack in India, particularly three people who are either um, caught up in or linked to that attack. So yeah, some really great books to kick off my 2021 reading in January. And obviously at the end of January, I will wrap them all up and you can find out what I thought of them. And your heads are probably spinning now because of how many books I have chucked at you, so I won't keep going. If this is your first time checking out this channel, if you've liked what you've seen, I would love it if you subscribed. Drop me a comment, what are you reading in 2021? Um, I would love to chat books with you. And until next time, bye. Bernadine Evaristo, that's not her name, is that just... It is Bernadine. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs>